That game there against Watford is not one that anybody is going to watch the highlights of, that anyone's going to remember further down the line, but it was a 1-0 win against a very, I would say, poor Watford side. And United are through to the FA Cup fourth round after Ole Gunnar Solskjaer made widespread wholesale changes to his team, rested tons of players, job done. So in that sense, tonight was exactly the sort of result that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer would have wanted. The injury to Eric Bailly aside, everything really, I suppose, kind of went to plan. But it was an uninspiring watch, wasn't it? Those fringe players that going into the game tonight, we were told uh, by the media in the build-up that this was an opportunity tonight for those fringe players to really prove themselves to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, that, that they're needed by Solskjaer. The likes of Jesse Lingard, Brandon Williams, Dan James. Don't think anybody proved themselves vital to Solskjaer tonight. Dan James, let's be honest, he's not good enough to play for Manchester United. He really isn't. I think we've seen enough of him now. To we've, we've seen plenty of him to have that to have that opinion opinion sorry formed correctly. He's just not good enough. Jesse Lingard, his United career is done. Uh, he's still going to be a good footballer. He's going to be like Johnny Evans going elsewhere and have a good few years ahead of him. But he's just not part of the future at United anymore. And Brandon Williams, he was supposed to be the backup to Aaron Wan-Bissaka. But given that we're looking at Max Aaron's, uh, I think Timothy fosu mensah looks like he's leaving too. Solskjaer is really going to cut down and trim his squad. And tonight was the opportunity for those players to really come in, as I said, and show and prove themselves and, and become part of this squad this season. But you didn't really see anything there. But Scott McTominay, he was the captain tonight. He scored the captain's goal early on. McTominay loves an early goal. Overall, his performance was pretty poor. Largely... Uh, in, in parts, anyway. He was good in other parts. It wasn't a complete performance from, from McTominay, the likes that we've seen against against Leeds, for example. But McTominay got the goal, and that was really all that mattered. But there's not really that many talking points from tonight because it was really quite an uninspiring game. Eric Bailly getting kneed in the head by Dean Henderson. Uh, Dean Henderson, who I actually thought had a good game. Oh, man, he's just unlucky, really. I really hope that's nothing more than just a precaution to take him off. He wanted to come back on, but you know what it's like with concussion. The players, they shouldn't be allowed to make their own decisions. So that was the right decision there. Someone I will talk about is Donny van der Beek. I really enjoyed watching him play. I, I, I sat there and actually probably just watched him play, watched his movement off and on the ball. He's such a tidy footballer. And I think he's a sort of midfielder that could add so much balance into the midfield when Bruno Fernandes is playing. Because Bruno Fernandes is someone, he likes to play the first time pass, the round the corner pass, the quick movement, the fast movement, the balls over the top. He's a bit different. To Donny van der Beek, who's someone who just like makes it tick. I think the closest comparison we've got in that squad there that we all we've all seen plenty of is Juan Mata. That's a style of footballer that van der Beek is, and he's not really someone who wants to naturally hold deep. I think he was almost tasked with that by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer tonight. And then when Matic came on, van der Beek went a little bit further up. I want to see him play more first team football in big games for Man United. I think Van der Beek can add so much balance into a midfield and he's so comfortable with the ball at his feet and that's something that our midfield just does not have. We tend to move it on so quickly because we're, we're almost, it's like hot potato when our midfield has the ball. Van der Beek can slow that down and I mean that in a good way. Uh, Axel Tuanzebe, I thought he played well at centre-back. Alex Tellez at left-back. He, he played all right. I mean, it was a, his, his corner that uh, McTominay nodded in. Uh, Tellez hasn't really lit. His United career yet, I would say. I think he's probably his biggest asset has been making Shaw better so far. But there's still plenty of time to come from Tellez, so let's, let's see what happens. And maybe we sh it's just because I expected fireworks, because he was a ready-made Champions League level left-back. Greenwood, he's still been off this season, really. Everything that's happened off the pitch has clearly affected him, and it's understandable with the players so young. I think Solskjaer did well to take him out of the spotlight, and he'll just keep improving, I think, as the season goes on. But... Let's see what happens there. Uncle Igalo didn't come on against his old team. Didn't get a chance. I think that was a bit unfair. But United won the game. So it doesn't really matter what happened. As I said, that that's the that's the sort of game where it, it was a bit of a lose-lose situation for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because win the game, you're expected to beat Watford. Come on. Don't shout about that. Lose the game or draw the game. Hellfire would have come down. So as, as I said, it's a bit of a lose-lose situation. But given that we went into that game, we made wholesale changes you know so many players rested in that game I'll take it I'll take a 1-0 win an uninspiring win but a win nevertheless and a clean sheet happy days into the fourth round of the FA Cup and the big game now the big game is Burnley this week who knew how big this game against Burnley would be when it was 
delayed at the start of the season because we got an extra week off. Win this and we go three points clear ahead of Liverpool before our trip to Anfield. Good God, what a position we can put ourselves in before that game at Anfield. Christ almighty. But that game tonight there against Watford, who was your man of the match? For me, man of the match, I'm going to struggle. I really am going to struggle to pull anyone out there, I think, but Tomane, because of his goal, or Tuanzebe at centre-back, or Van der Beek, and no one really stood out in any way, shape, or form. So let me know who your man of the match would be, but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will be happy with that. He'll be disappointed. With... It's amazing, right? He rested by against... No, yeah, he rested by against City because he played four games in a row. We don't want him to get injured. Then he comes against Watford. He gets kneed in the head by Dean Henderson. That's just unlucky. And I really hope it doesn't lead to an injury because I think we need him against Liverpool at Anfield, especially with the likes of Mane, Firmino and Salah. But let's talk about that when that game comes. But who was your man of the match? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. But a 1-0 win, uninspiring, but the job got done. And ultimately, when you make that many changes to your team, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm.